So before we get into this interview, a little bit of housekeeping. Obviously, there are some directors, filmmakers, creatives that can't make it to the festival because it can be a bit of a trek, especially if you're living in America or Spain or Germany or France or wherever. You know, it can be a bit of a trek. So what I decided to do again was to get some pre-recorded stuff done. I got on the old Zoom stream yards, whatever people wanted me to get onto, I got onto them. And we did some remote calls, pre-recorded stuff, stuff awesome awesome interviews with some great great filmmakers that i can't wait for you to listen to right now so that movie will have just played at the festival people will have seen it i'll try and get some live reactions from people as they're coming out so we can play some of that as well just because you can't get here you should still get your q a and it should still be with me because I'm the best one. You're going to be getting a few of these throughout the week, scattered around, and they're all absolutely awesome. This is Nerdly Out Loud, Nerdly TV. We are at Romford, the Romford Film Festival. We love the Romford Film Festival. We're going to continue coming back here every single year, as long as they will have us. If you've been living under a rock and you have not seen this, Nerdly has got themselves into a little position where we are in partnership with Shepka Productions, The Baby in the Basket, which is a gothic horror. He's joined up with Flickering Myth to partner up and make this movie, and then they came to us and asked Nerdly to jump on board too. Absolutely, we were going to do that, and we did a crowdfunder. The crowdfunder went amazing. It's still ongoing, so you can go to Kickstarter, type in The Baby in the Basket. I'll put links all over the place. Type in The Baby in the Basket, Give a pound, give ten pound, but only give what you can. We don't want people giving money they don't have. Please do all those wonderful things. Like, subscribe, bell, all of it. Brilliant stuff. Let's get into today's interview, which will be with whoever's in the title. But if you're not at Romford, get yourself there. Get yourself to the cinema. We are showing a smorgasbord of awesome movies. So yes, we are back on Nerdly Out Loud, Nerdly UK, Nerdly TV Presents, whatever you want to call it, and we are still inside the Romford Film Festival. We have got another cheeky interview for you to, to um, promote this man's movie Out and About, which has shown at the festival today, and hopefully everybody loved it. We will be able to confirm that later on for you because we're technically doing this in the past. <laughs> how, how are you this fine day, Peter? I'm good. I'm, uh, I'm here in New York. I'm right outside New York City, about uh, 20, 20 miles north, right up the Hudson River, which um, is, uh, you know, I can just look out, almost look out the window and see Manhattan in the, in the distance. So it's a, it's a nice rainy May afternoon here. Um, so I guess, you know, it's just like London, I hear. It's supposed to rain there all the time. Eh, pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> I like the rain, so uh, I, I, that, would, that would work for me. Oh, I'm definitely a rain person. Like, I, I hate sunshine. Um, my wife hates the fact that I hate the sunshine, but I would, I would much rather just be sat in a snowstorm. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we haven't had snow in New York. We, we didn't have really anything this year and nothing really much last year, and I miss it. You know, I grew up with snowstorms as a kid, and, and it's, it's uh, so I'm with you on that. So we're going to jump into Out and About in a quick up minute. But yeah. um, first of all, I'd really like to get to know Peter a little bit more. Um, just quickly if you could tell us a little bit about how you you got into the industry a little bit about your background and and why would you want to be a filmmaker well i you know originally i was drawn to writing i wanted to be a novelist and i wrote a novel that i couldn't get published when i was in my 20s and then during that process i realized i liked writing the dialogue most of all i wasn't i wasn't so crazy about the rest of it and that sort of, you know, I'd always been a fan of movies. I grew up on the 1970s American movies, which I loved. And so I sort of naturally gravitated from prose writing to screenwriting and uh, wrote a number of scripts and was moved out from my home in New York to uh, or out a little town outside of New York to Hollywood and lived out there for five years and tried to sell screenplays and had a little nibble of success. 
Um, then I also realized that, you know, hey, why am I writing some screenplay for somebody else to direct? I can direct it myself. I, you know, I best know how I want things to sound and, and seem. And I don't know anything about technology or cameras, but or 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 much of any of it. But it just seemed like it didn't take any special skills to be a director if I could write. <laughs> um, really, just communication is all it need, all you need to be a director. It's nice if you know all the extra camera stuff. If if you have that ability and that knowledge, it's certainly helpful. But it's not detrimental if you don't have it. And so that's how I got into writing and directing movies. And um, what was the was was there any specific moment that made you go I'm doing this or was it just a, a kind of gradual progression into it? Yeah, I think it was a gradual progression of you know A to B to C to D, and then um, you know about twenty years ago I made my first film as a writer director, first film ever. Period. I never <laughs> you know I didn't nothing else had you know. I'd never done anything before. And I was surrounded by uh, really good producers and a really good cast and crew. And so it was a really enjoyable experience. And that film had, you know, some success on the festival circuit. Then a few years later, I made, you know, another film against the current, which was a bigger movie that had some, you know, Joseph Fiennes was in it. And um, mm, Mary Tyler. Yeah. yeah. So that was sort of a bigger indie independent, you know, still an independent movie, small budget, but with a little bit of Hollywood touches to it. And this one is sort of more way back to the basics. You know, it's just, I even, I act in this one. I'd never acted before. And it's just a much smaller movie. So, so on that, um, for me, and amongst this this festival this year, we've got many movies here and they're all they're all fantastic films, but this movie was just such kind of, it was a relatable movie. It, it was very true to life. Um, although it is like a little bit, you know, out there in, in spaces. But it's just the kind of movie I've not seen for a long, long time, if I'm honest, which is kind of why I vibed on it. Where did the idea for Out and About come from? What do you mean you haven't seen it in a long time? <laughs> well, these, these movies that are like just supremely dialogue heavy and, and kind of... Um, a moment in time spending the entirety of the movie just on a walk kind of thing. Like I've not really seen that. Um, I've seen two guys sitting in a room talking right. that ha that right. happens a lot, <laughs> but a man walking down the street with his inner monologue. Yeah. 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 Well, I, you know, the idea comes from me living a version of this movie every day. <laughs> you know, I go out, I walk around and of course, like all of us, I have a bunch of thoughts in my head. And, uh, you know, I was looking around for movie ideas to write. And they say to write what you know. And I thought I also was looking for something low budget. And so those two elements, like, well, what do I know? Well, I know walking around my hometown. I know my hometown. I know the people here. I know, uh, you know, and, and this is be a cheap movie we could do you know we could shoot it right here in my hometown it's all we don't need any lights or anything it's all outside and so th those two elements combine to give me the idea of this movie well, one of the things that i did wonder and um, i know a lot of filmmakers are, are doing this right now as well where they do the the one take movie was this ever a like um an, an option for you because with it being one afternoon you could have maybe went that way well, yeah. yeah, no, I never thought, of, you know, the people who do one take movies are like more, I think they know more about movies, more about film. <laughs> I couldn't imagine you trying to figure that all out. Also, I don't think I, I like, like that so much. I don't, I don't think it would appeal to me. So uh, I would, I would probably get antsy being stuck in one, <laughs> one shot. I was, I would probably. <laughs> I would find it self. Con I would become self conscious of that process. Uh, so I, I like a conventional way of. I maybe I'm boring or you know, you know, you know, lack of imagination. But I like the basic no. head film language that I grew up with. 
you know, no, wider it's, shots. It's, wider shots. It, it's not boring at all. It's not boring at all. But how long did it's it take to shoot this? Simple. We shot this in 12 days with a full cast and crew, and then uh, two additional days with just me and the cameraman, essentially, walking around. Um, and, and so I guess, you know, 14 days of filmic material. And then later on, you know, I'd do the voiceover, add, add in the voiceover in the studio. And, and how is that? As you, as you say, you've um, directed three movies now. This is the first one that you are the lead in. Um, how, how does that even work when you're walking around and you're acting, but at that point in time, there's dialogue going on over the top. Like, how does that work as well, an actor? I just, I just tried to imagine what the dialogue. There, yeah. There's two kinds of inner monologue going on within this film. One is when the character's alone, walking like up a street or something, or walking yeah. down a hill. He's alone. That's one, and that's usually more sustained. That might be 30 seconds of, of voiceover, inner dialogue material. And then the second kind is interspersed within interactions with other people. So I'm talking to somebody and I'm thinking little thoughts in the, my mind at the same time. And so during the scenes that we shot but with the other actors, I pretty much just forgot about the fact that there would be voiceover added and hoped we would figure it out later and get insert. <laughs> and you know, it's funny because this, my, my cameraman was always saying, hey, are you leaving enough time for those little voiceover moments? And I said, like, I can't worry about that now. You know, we'll worry about that later. And, you know, I did have to worry about it later, but <laughs> usually it worked out okay. Um, and for the longer scenes, I just sort of imagined what I'd written as I walked down the street. So I had it in my head or some, you know, some version of it. And and on your walk, which is a, a great walk, by the way, you bump into many fantastic characters. Um, some from from the the leads past, uh, Jeff's past. Some yeah. that he kind of knows in passing. Some that he's heard of. Who, when you were writing, and then when it comes to the screen and you see the finished project, who became your favorite character to talk to? I like, you know, if I had to say, you know, I like different things about different scenes. Uh, I think the scene with the coach, the old baseball coach, is mm. probably a really big and important scene. And, and I like that scene. And I, I think it, it's probably the, the, the single most telling scene in the movie. But I like the scene with his old high school girlfriend a lot, too. So I, li I like different things about different scenes. And how much, how much kind of like improv was there on the day or, or was it stick to that? No, we, we, we stuck to the script mostly. If we had a little extra time, we would try some improvs and some of that made it into the movie, but mostly not. Mostly we just used what we shot. We actually tried a fair amount of Im improvisation, but realized we weren't really set up for it technology wise because we didn't have two cameras going and and so it was it really it was actually a waste of time to do as much improv as as we did <laughs> still, still fun though right no, yeah, definitely fun. yeah stick cool. stick it on the dvd the extras yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. um one of our selection panelists got in touch with me today and asked me to ask a question because yeah. he's not getting to ask you this uh, it's our panelist, Mr. Peter Blondin. He's an awesome bloke. You would love him. Uh, and he was he was quite smitten with your movie out and about. And he wanted me to ask you if you had maybe taken any influence from 1968's The the, the Swimmer. Yes. And uh, when putting this film together. Well, you know, it's funny. That comes up a lot. And I do like that movie a lot. And it, it's a very similar movie. And I, and I, I mentioned it. I, I, you know, I, I, I always tell people like, it's kind of like the swimmer, mm. but whether, you know, to do, I, there was no conscious, you know, you know, influence on the movie itself. That movie, you know, it didn't inform how I did anything within this movie, but it, it's no doubt that it influenced me in some way. Because I saw the movie, I I love the movie, so it's in my consciousness, and 
And there's no question that the structure is very similar. So to it influenced to some degree and to the exact degree, I don't really know how much it influenced this film, but definitely somehow. <laughs> awesome, awesome. He'll be happy with that. He'll be very happy with that. Um, I'm no filmmaker. That's your job. Um, but I have to assume that with this movie, when you're filming and then you get into the post-production and whatnot, there's a million different ways that this film could possibly go wrong uh, um, and something might not fit. Like you say, the narration not quite fitting yeah. or something like that. But I don't like to talk about the things that could have went wrong or the things that could mm -hmm. did go wrong. I like to talk about what you're most proud of. When you see this movie up on the big screen or when you see the finished project, what is the one thing that stands out like, you know what, we smashed it that day? I feel like, you know, I feel like certain scenes are, you know, I, I feel like what we are most proud of is that every day seemed like a successful, every one of those 12 days seemed successful <laughs> to us mm -hmm. right? on the set. And it was generally a happy experience, a happy set. And so I'm, I'm proud of those two things. In terms of watching the movie, um, you know, I, I, I love how beautiful our town looks. This is my, my hometown. And, and I never, you know, of course, I always appreciate it on some level, but just seeing it all up there again, it's like, wow, this is a really pretty place we live. Um, so uh, a lot of things went right. We got lucky with the weather. We weren't bothered by rain. That was a big concern of ours. Like, oh, my God, you know, what happens if it rains? And, and, and another big concern had, was light. You know, the light's going to change character. You know, it's all supposed to take place in a single afternoon. It's going to look weird if it's cloudy. And all that stuff, you know, we tried to manipulate it as best we could in the editing room, but it really doesn't matter. The light doesn't match. And so I'm most happy that that's not an issue, I guess. Yeah. Was that was that your question? I forgot. No, no, definitely, definitely. That's that's absolutely it. And, and what do you... Um... What do you hope audiences take away from the movie when they walk out? Well, I, what I, the thing I most like to hear, I most pleases me. Somebody said, your movie stayed with me. I mm -hmm. thought about it after I just, you know, watched it. I didn't just, you know, watch it and forget about it. it was like, oh, that was fun. Or they thought about it later on. So if it can have some sort of impact or, to move people in some way and have them, you know, sort of stick stick with them on some level. I'm very happy when I hear that. So that's the goal, I guess. Do you think we could ever see the further adventures of Jeff? I would love to do this movie again. <laughs> <laughs> I loved making it. I I, I loved. I loved. Uh, I loved shooting it. I liked acting in it. That was a pleasant surprise. Surprise. I loved it. Uh, so yeah, I, yeah, I would love to. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that that absolutely shows in the movie that you are genuinely having a great time while mm -hmm. making it because you always have this this childlike twinkle in your eye as you're walking around and having these conversations, and it, it's just so great to see. Yeah, so I, I want to see another one. Yeah, well, thank you, thank you. Yeah, maybe I would uh, say just do do the same movie again. <laughs> happily, happily. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's been touring the festivals and it's been doing gangbusters. People are really loving it. It's it's picking up awards left, right, and center. Um, what's the best thing apart from obviously the the lady that said or the person that said that they'd walked out and they were still thinking about it? What's the best thing you have heard somebody say or you've read somebody write about the film? Uh, <laughs> we just got a nice quote from a, a <laughs> Peter Callahan is a charismatic and very appealing actor. It was nice to hear from Rex Reed as a very famous American film critic. That was nice to hear. Uh, so, you know, uh, it's a, uh, somebody called the movie a gem. You know, I mean, we've got, gotten some nice blurbs from critics. 
uh, you know, really well written. You know, any, anything that <laughs> compliments us is, is nice to hear. Yeah. Isn't isn't it funny how in a in a day and age or a time when everybody walks around with their head in their phones, a movie like this, where it's a guy walking down the street. You know, he uses his phone every now and then, but for the most part, he's just walking down the street, right, talking right. to people. And and how often do we really walk down our own street and talk to people, you know? And yeah. and I think that's why your movie is hitting. It's why it's resonating. Because it's a time that, I don't know, maybe maybe we need to get back to. Yeah, I'm, I'm always struggling to get back to that. You know, I always, you know, swear to myself I want less technology, less engagement mm -hmm. with you know, and I, and I fail every day at it, you know, I'm constantly, you know, I'm, you know, it's bad. I, I want to get back to the way I grew up, you know, more, more just less connected to technology. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm with you there. I'm with you there. So I'm going to start wrapping it out a little bit now. And then um, this has been absolutely fantastic. And again, Peter, for, thank you for, for submitting your movie to us. Thank you for letting us show it at the festival. Absolutely. Thanks. Thanks for selecting it. Um, I'm, I'm glad you guys chose it and uh, I hope the audience enjoys it. Uh, they, I'm, I'm pretty damn sure they will. Yeah, but, well, um, and, you know, if they want to follow us, uh, you know, can we are, we're on Facebook and, and Twitter and Instagram and all that. And our website is out and about movie.com. And we are now available in the United States. We're available for streaming. So it is available. Nice. And eventually it'll be in the UK as well. I, I love it when, you, when when my interviewees do my job for me. That just yeah. makes everything so much easier. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So you've already kind of... Oh, in case my producers, you know, watch it. <laughs> So, so what what is next for Peter? Are you are you pretty much just pushing this movie out there right now and letting people find it? Yeah, yeah. I don't know what's next for Peter. <laughs> um, I don't, you know. I, I think about that. I don't have any other ideas. Any, you know, I have other screenplays I like, but I don't think they're feasible to get made for one reason or another. So I'm kind of sitting around, you know, waiting for what the next thing might be, and just and I hope there is another thing. You know. It's making a movie is hard. It's hard to get it all together, to have all the pieces come together. I've been fortunate that I've got to do, make three real, you know, feature length movies. And I hope I get to make another one. We'll see. I would have loved to. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, um, Pia. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap that out now and uh, thank you so much for coming on and doing this. Um, I appreciate you. I appreciate you everyone having... everyone on the panel loved this movie and, and I can't wait for the audiences to to see it as well. I think they're just gonna really dig it. Yeah, good. I'm sorry I can't be there. It's uh... it's all good, man. It's all good, but you've got to speak to the most important person at the festival, which is me. Oh. So <laughs> so swings and roundabouts. Oh. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. I'll wrap that up there. All right. Great. No wonder I don't come up here more often. This hill always seems endless. Yeah, I try and take walks when I can. I walk all the time. People are in their own heads. They are in their heads. I'm in mine. Have you lived here your whole life? Uh, seems that way. I was in the city for a number of years and finally ended up back here. Who lives here now? Who's a kid in my old room? Can I help you? No, uh, I'm just passing by. Goodbye now. From Florida, huh? Yeah. You know Ever seen an alligator? I have. God, I'm a moron. Slept with half the girls in our class. Half, I wish. So how are you? Uh, how are things at the magazine? Okay. Same. Coach Byrne. It's Jeff Fisher. First base. Hit third for you senior year. Excellent athlete. A little lazy though. Things change. My plans are none of your business. But we have a daughter, okay? Who flies a flag like that? Howdy. When I was your age, I used to practically run up those steps. Now they look like Mount Everest to me.
and that that'll be me. Hi. Uh, okay. Mighty Hudson, always moving. Gotta keep moving.